Hello, hello. This is episode 35 of Bromberg News. Stay tuned. I'll be taking you to the BBN kitchen. I was walking around our neighborhood the other day and I noticed a couple of hummingbird feeders filled with red nectar. I hope it wasn't food coloring. Please don't use any food coloring when either making hummingbird nectar or buying it at a store. You can actually make your own. It's very easy and very simple and you can store it in the fridge as well. So the recipe is four parts water and one part regular white sugar like I have here. Uh, you can use tap water, hot tap water. That's provided that you have really good quality water. If you can drink it like here, we do drink our water. So I don't actually worry about making hummingbird nectar without tap water. But I still prefer to use boiling water for two reasons. Um, that way water gets disinfected and then you can actually put it in the fridge and store it there for a few days. With tap water, it's not recommended to put it in the fridge and leave it there for a couple of days. It will go stale and bad. So here we go. Uh, I'm boiling some water here. And I like to use this kind of containers because uh, it's kind of easy to shake everything and then put it in the fridge. A bit of a funnel. Okay, so here I go. I am going to make uh, four cups of hummingbird nectar, which will be four cups, uh, it will be more actually. It will be four cups of water. So here we go. Four. I'm going to just wait for the kettle to boil. And because it's four cups of water, I need one full cup of sugar. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll just fill this up while the water is boiling. Just a little bit more. Oops. So there we go. We've got one cup of regular sugar and I'm just going to pour it right into the bottle. It's kind of pretty like that, isn't it? And there we go. Nice and hot. This goes in here. Perfect. And now, easy. And, oof. And here's my hummingbird nectar. As you can see, it was pretty easy to make. It's a bit hot to put in the fridge. I'm gonna wait until it cools off enough to touch, and then I'm gonna store it in the fridge until I need it. So folks, make your own nectar, four parts of water, one part of sugar, save you money, and keep your hummingbirds healthy. Hi David, Tim Veal writes to you again. I've noticed that grackles have exceptionally bright pale yellow eyes. Actually, it's a very striking feature even in daytime lighting conditions. I'd like to know if this is related to the reasons why animals' eyes shine at night when intercepted by a flashlight's beam. Hi Tim. A brightly colored iris in a bird could signify a number of things, including the sex of a bird, the separation of two closely related species, or the readiness for the breeding season. It could even serve as an adaptation for living in certain environmental conditions. But it can also be used as a badge to indicate different age classes and thus the maturity of potential mates. And that is indeed the case with a common grackle, as the juvenile bird has dark eyes and the adults have bright pale yellow eyes. Eye color has nothing to do with that other feature you mentioned, that is eye shine. Some nocturnal birds such as owls and whippoorwills have a layer at the back of the eye called the tapetum lucidum. It's like a mirror which reflects light back to the retina, making it more likely that light will strike sensory cells there. As a result, birds with a tapetum lucidum see much better at night. And that feature produces the eye shine you see when you shine a flashlight into the eyes of a nocturnal bird or mammal, 
or take its picture with a flash. I've always found it curious why some birds laid camouflage-like eggs and the others, the pretty pale blue ones. I mean, why that blue color? Why not red or purple? Well, now I know. And even though it takes a lot to make an egg of that light blue color, it's all done to protect babies inside. Scientists inspected eggs of village weavers, their eggs are pale blue, and here's how they explain the presence of the pigment. Well, first of all, blue protects embryos from UV radiation, this is called the pigmented parasol effect, and at the same time, blue is dark enough to absorb heat and keep eggs warm. Scientists call this the dark car effect, and this is your natural engineering at its best. Taiwan is gathering its best birding minds to figure out how to deal with an invasive species. In 1984, someone decided to start a private zoo there and they brought the African sacred ibis. Well, at some point after that, a typhoon destroyed the zoo and the birds escaped and they've been breeding in the wild since. The ibises are certainly impressive birds, but they're seriously invasive. They enjoy eating eggs and the young of the indigenous little egrets and cattle egrets. And conservationists are really worried that if the ibis population continues to grow, they will eventually wipe out the egret population. This is actually already happening in Europe. So far, steps have been taken to destroy ibis nests and eggs, but the Taiwanese officials are looking for ways to do it more permanently and with less destruction. Red Willow County Tourism has just received a $15,000 marketing grant from the Nebraska Tourism Commission. This money is to be used on advertising and promoting Nebraska spring birding and all the activities and places you can visit while watching Greater Prairie Chickens, American White Pelicans and Sandhill Cranes in the area. There will be print advertising in such renowned birding magazines as Bird Watchers Digest and Living Bird and also online ads on Facebook and Cornell's websites. The county is hoping to increase bird tourism by 30 to 40 percent. Is it possible that government can be so progressive? The event I want to talk to you about today is absolutely huge. Have you ever heard of the British Bird Fair? It takes place in England and this year it's scheduled for the 19th to the 21st of August. There are so many bird tour and bird merchandise companies participating there that the organizers have to list them alphabetically. Check out their websites and their cool promotional video. We all agreed that it was really hard to pick a winner this week. Check out all the pictures that were submitted. Go to our website and check out the blog for episode 35. But we voted and here are the top five. It's been really cold and rainy here in Quebec and I noticed that my peanut feeder is being emptied almost every day. So this is what we are sending to the winner because he lives in Toronto and that's Anthony Gomez. Congratulations, Anthony. We're inviting you to be one of the judges for the next episode. A couple of thank yous before I say goodbye to you today. Debbie, thank you so much for being one of the judges on today's episode. Thank you all for your kind comments on our YouTube channel, and we're back in the BBN Kitchen next episode.